I'm Marlon Sorge from the Aerospace Corporation. As you can see from this forum, there are a lot of different issues uh, concerning space traffic management, space safety, uh, especially uh, these days. And I'm not going to solve any of them here. Uh, rather, what I'm going to look at is, is some discussion about uh, maybe how we need to be approaching the types of things we need to be thinking of in terms of how we define good, robust, uh, justifiable practices. As you probably noticed, space operations have been changing significantly in the recent years. Uh, I kind of think of this as, as space operations, space systems as spreading out, meaning that uh, the envelope in which they operate, in which they exist, is getting bigger and bigger in multiple different dimensions. Uh, some examples of this uh, that are commonly discussed are the fact that the uh, satellites are uh, getting increasingly smaller. Uh, not only are there smaller and smaller satellites, but they're, they're more capable. Uh, additionally, the combinations of satellites that are used for missions are changing as well. Uh, the size of constellations has been uh, increasing substantially uh, with uh, some constellations of tens of thousands of satellites being proposed. Both of these uh, changes are also effectively increasing the number of operational satellites and also increasing the number of operators using those satellites. Also, physically, things are changing in terms of the fact that the orbits that satellites are using are uh, spreading out beyond where uh, the satellites historically have operated, changing the volume of space uh, that actually needs to be uh, kept track of uh, in terms of uh, operating safely. There have also been significant changes in operations techniques uh, with uh, increased autonomy and uh, satellite servicing and uh, many other uh, new approaches and techniques that are happening. And on top of all of that, the rate of change of all of these updates and changes has significantly increased as well. So it's not that the, just that there are more changes and the envelope is expanding, it's expanding faster uh, than before. So, the effect is what constitutes normal, what we have to plan for uh, when we're thinking about how to manage safe operation of the space is significantly increasing. No sign of stopping, we need to be planning for this. And the problem is, of course, it, it tests what we've commonly been doing and uh, challenges us to figure out better approaches. How do these changes then affect space operations? Well, as you might imagine, they affect them different ways and different aspects. So in terms of space surveillance, obviously, more objects to track, uh, smaller stuff is, is more difficult. Uh, the new, new operations are potentially providing uh, challenges in terms of tracking uh, things like uh, frequently maneuvered spacecraft. There are more data providers. Definitely could be a good positive, but you also got to figure out how do I use all these new data sources effectively. And, and finally, of course, there are more regions of space that you got to be watching because people are using different ones. So uh, that certainly increases difficulty. In terms of collision avoidance, again, increased number of objects clearly is going to be a problem. More operators is also a problem because you've got to do more communication. And certainly recent events have shown that this communications problem is a non-trivial one. Uh, there's also potentially more debris to dodge. And again, the new ways of operating provide new challenges. Autonomy, collision avoidance, uh, definitely need to figure out how to work that one out, for example. Finally, with debris mitigation, more mass on orbit, so more potential debris. Uh, the new designs and the frequency of new satellite designs uh, adds the potential for more problems with uh, reliability and the inability to dispose. New orbit regimes are being used. They don't have the same characteristics necessarily as the ones we've traditionally used. You have to figure out how to take advantage of those. And with a wider range of operators, you've got uh, more different rules, more different approaches, and potentially uh, areas where uh, the operators don't understand what it is they need to be doing. These effects on safe space operations have some consequences, of course, in the big picture. Uh, obviously, the more stuff you have, the smaller it is, the more difficult it is to just keep track of what's up there, which is kind of the basis uh, that you got to start from for uh, space traffic management. Uh, clearly, there are a larger range of uh, possibilities that need to be taken into account with the uh, different ways that operations are happening. Uh, with the uh, wider variety of operators, there are, they've got different needs, different priorities that need to be dealt with. 
Um, and with the speed that things are changing, operations techniques are probably going to change on a fairly quick pace that obviously has to be kept up with. And as well with the manufacturing of the satellites, their capabilities, their reliabilities are changing very quickly, uh, both of which affect uh, the ability to uh, do safe space operations. And because of all these changes, obviously the debris mitigation requirements have to be updated and expanded as the uh, envelope and operations expand as well. Ultimately, with more activity, there are more potential severe uh, space traffic issues that have to be addressed. So how do we get our hands around these consequences uh, so that we can figure out what we need to be doing? Well, obviously the first basic thing is that we need to develop techniques for relating the behaviors uh, to the risks and consequences that we care about. We need to be able to, to describe in some repeatable fashion what constitutes safe, what's good, what's, what's bad, what's helpful, what's not. And certainly, as we've seen with uh, the previous discussion, this, uh, these approaches need to be applicable along a wide range of parameters like, that we're going to be likely to be seeing in uh, the current and future space operations. Uh, the difficulty here is, of course, uh, as we've been discussing, is that range of parameters is constantly changing, constantly expanding. Uh, and we need to be able to accommodate that. And it's increasingly important that we do because of the speed that this change is happening. Uh, if we don't, we're gonna have to constantly be revisiting uh, our ideas of what constitutes space, what rules we have, what guidelines we put together, and that just isn't a feasible thing to do. Uh, in addition, whatever uh, approaches we use to uh, define what's uh, safe uh, needs to be flexible enough to accommodate innovations. If uh, anything's been clear over the last uh, few years, it's that uh, there's gonna be a lot of changes. Things that we didn't think would have been possible a few years ago are actually normal now, and there's no chance that that's gonna be slowing down. So uh, again, gotta make sure that we're flexible. And finally, whatever approaches uh, are being used need to be appropriately understandable and computable for uh, their applications. Uh, you don't want uh, a, an approach that is so complex that the uh, people that need to be using it can't use it. On the other hand, you don't want something so simple that you're missing uh, very critical parameters that you need to be accounting for. How do we quantify these consequences? Uh, there are a number of different methods for doing this uh, for different problems that typically vary from simple to complex. Uh, but what's common for all of them is the need to be able to capture the relationship between the uh, behaviors and the consequences that are of concern. Uh, in the example of the uh, cases on the right there, the consequence is the uh, number of objects in orbit in the future, uh, as the consideration here was uh, controlling the debris environment. So examples of different approaches for that, I'm going to uh, use uh, large constellations. They are in the title of the talk. So one of the ways of looking at it is just strictly the number of satellites. Uh, this is very simple, uh, fairly straightforward to calculate, uh, but as you can see in the top right, its correlation to the consequence is only so-so. Uh, so one can also consider a aggregate uh, type of parameter uh, as an example for the other two charts, the undisposed mass or the undisposed area per year. So what you're doing there is you're aggregating the effects of uh, the success of post-mission disposal, uh, the, the mass and area, which uh, both correspond to the potential amount of debris that might be produced from these objects and their likelihood of getting hit, uh, and a, a rate that sort of accumulates how much uh, this effect is going to have happen. Uh, and as you can see, as you would expect, the correlation with the uh, consequence is better because you're considering more parameters. And finally, there are the uh, things like uh, environmental indexes uh, in this case, where you're considering potentially a lot of different types of parameters, including what does the environment currently look like? How is the constellation operating? Not just some of its characteristics. Uh, and there you may be able to get an even better correlation uh, but of course the consequences that you have to be able to uh, do more complicated calculations. 
Uh, regardless of this, uh, what you need to do for any particular event is you need to, or a particular kind of process you're trying to cover, is you need to say, okay, I need to figure out the right balance. Am I capturing the consequences that I need to capture or not? Uh, and is my approach sufficiently usable for my application? Finally, for any of these, uh, what ultimately needs to do, do, be done is you need to have a definition of what's acceptable. You can define a consequence uh, say like the number of objects in orbit in the future, but what's okay? Is it that you can't live with anything anything more than none? Uh, can you live with what exists now? Can you live with some increase uh, in the future? Uh, and that's critical to being able to do these, these quantifiable, justifiable uh, balancing of, uh, of what you need to do and uh, what the consequences are. Even when we are able to quantify some of the uh, safety effects that we want and be able to define the uh, behaviors that will uh, get us there, there's another problem. Uh, different aspects of space traffic management have different consequences and push uh, actions and behaviors in different directions. Uh, one of the uh, clear examples is removing debris from space. Obviously, from a space debris perspective, uh, this is a big plus. Uh, you got a lot less stuff up there to create debris. You can see on the top right uh, chart showing the difference between uh, good disposal and not so good disposal. The problem is you've got to do something with that, uh, those objects. And one of the most common things is to cause them to re-enter. Uh, as you can see on the bottom right, there are consequences to that as well as uh, not everything burns up and uh, some of it can come crashing down again. So clearly, We've got a conflict here potentially between uh, two different aspects of space safety we need to deal with. This is certainly not the only one. Uh, disposal, again, has some good effects for debris, but it can have some negative effects for collision avoidance. Uh, there are also things that relate to uh, satellite operations. Uh, there are some advantages to having large numbers of satellites in terms of redundancy, in terms of coverage but from a debris mitigation collision avoidance standpoint, not so great. So we've also got to figure out not only how to quantify the, the individual impacts of, of behaviors on space safety, but, but do the quantification in order to find a good way to balance some of these conflicting requirements. So what do we take away from this in terms of a direction forward? So we want to be able to, uh, with all these rapid changes, be able to define a path for good safe space operations. Uh, in order to do that, we've got to come up with rules, guidelines that uh, deal in, on a continuum basis with these wide range of variables that we're dealing with. Um, and we need to be able to quantify those relationships in order to be able to do that. Certainly one of the things I've seen over the years is if you start making uh, artificial divisions uh, in order to define your rules more easily, it is gonna come back and it's gonna bite you. Uh, so we definitely wanna try to deal with that. And given the speed that things are changing, it's, it's absolutely critical that, that our rules work over a wide range. Uh, the other problem, of course, is we need to balance the uh, conflicting requirements uh, and we need to do that based on consequences uh, we need to understand the cost benefit, cost benefit on both sides and uh, be able to do a balancing act there. Unfortunately, that requires some definition of what's considered acceptable, uh, which is a non-trivial but absolutely critical thing to have in order to do a good job of balancing. And finally, in order to help encourage innovation, uh, encourage the changes that are going on right now in the space industry, we need to be really more focused on performance-based rules, meaning uh, you're saying what it is you want to accomplish, not how you want to do that. And as I said, it's, it's critical for being able to, in, uh, to uh, encourage innovation. Uh, it's particularly important as uh, sometimes you get uh, approaches that, that hadn't been thought of before and are actually better than the historical approaches that have, that have happened. Um, it also reduces the opportunity for loopholes potentially by saying what it is you actually want to accomplish. Problem, of course, is this requires uh, a more complex analyses, a little more thinking about things. But given the amount of change that's going on, uh, we need some of these more flexible, uh, continuous approaches in order to uh, facilitate uh, the amazing changes that are going on in space while at the same time uh, keeping safe uh, the operations that are going on. 